Okay, then, Ed, so thank you ever so much for, for taking the time out of what is an incredibly busy schedule for you at the moment. But the long and short of the, the accounts today, it's, it's all good and positive, isn't it? Well, I think um, the accounts show that if you're in the Premier League, you get a lot more money. And if you come down, then you see a big fall in, in the finances because you just lose the TV revenue. And, um, and coming down is a real challenge for this club because we've still got the fundamental costs to, to deal with. But what the accounts say, and I think it's a real tribute to the staff here, that even with those ups and downs, we maintain a sound financial ship. We haven't got big debts at all. In fact, we've been repaying loans. And it's only by being shrewd and careful in the way we, we run the finances that we can keep investing in the playing squad and we kept the squad together in the summer we've strengthened we'll strengthen again in January we'll do so in a careful shrewd way but we will and our ambition is to spend every pound of spare money we can to get back to the Premier League and I think the accounts kind of, um, the accounts show the the stable underpinning of finance which allows that to happen and as you, you say we're fully aware of the importance of the Premier League and, and what it brings financially you look at the the finances from a year ago and then from these ones we've seen today, it's, it's double. It's, it's, it's huge, isn't it? And, huge. And, and everything that this football club is doing and spending is, is geared towards being a Premier League football club, isn't it? it? So, so how important is it that we don't stay in the Championship for any longer than a, a year? Oh, it's hugely important because we get two years of parachute payments and, um, and after that the financial position gets much harder uh, still. So we want to get back up. And um, the gap is getting wider as well, so it's getting harder to do this. And I think you see other clubs who have um, sort of spent money they didn't have, wrapped up big debts and then end up in a catastrophic financial situation. We've not done that. We're trying to show that you can have a community club without big massive debts which runs things financially well and can deal with coming down and get back up again. We've done that once in the last uh, two years. We're going to do it again this season. That is our absolute ambition. Of course, for Norwich, if we could secure Premier League status year by year, that would make this financial challenge much, much easier to deal with. But um, that's a tough thing for us to do, but um, we're ambitious and we want to do as well as we can. It is a very consistent message that always comes out of the club in terms of the way that it spends. It will never go beyond its, its means. And I think this, this summer in particular, I know these, these accounts don't actually look at the, the summers, but um, something as, as much as a £10 million transfer, which in, in this current market doesn't seem a huge amount, would, would have actually wiped away all the profit that you, you made this year. That's, that's how much that pair transfers sure. changed the, the accounts, don't they? I think the, um, the situation th th this summer was, um, was, was partly about fees, but it's also about wages. And in the end, it's about um, value. And we need to know that what is the players we're bringing in, we can afford, they're going to deliver for Norwich. And um, in the end, I think the decisions we made this summer were decisions which we felt would strengthen the squad mm. and would also um, educate the financial risks. Yeah, well, I think. Because I think they all come with a risk, don't they, player transfers? They all do effectively. It's true, but I think this summer, keeping uh, Tim Closer, keeping Johnny House, and uh, keeping uh, Alex Tetty in the early weeks, those were hugely important decisions for us. And when you actually look, um, at our squad compared to, uh, to other teams in the Championship. When you look at the fact that when we went up to Everton, we have played a team which didn't play on the Saturday yeah. and they went and beat a Premier League club. That shows you that strength and depth. But we're not complacent. We're not going to go and throw huge multi-million pound transfers at players who Alex doesn't think are really going to be value. We're not going to start spending money on wages in the Championship which burst every financial rule we've got but we are ambitious and we want to strengthen this squad Alex wants to we want to we have to be shrewd about how we do that and manage the assets we've got but we want to make sure that we do everything we can to back him and get us back to the Premier League and um, that's what we're trying to do OK so a couple of numbers that okay. jump out today from, from today's accounts uh, there's about two and a half million that's been paid to, yep. to directors do, do you want to explain basically where that money has come because basically sure. you made a profit this year and, and you wanted to pay off some existing debts well these were outstanding loans which go back um, years and they were supposed to be short term and they just became <laughs> much more long term so the dealer and Michael loans go back to over 10 years ago in the case of Michael Fulger when we went down to the championship we'd agreed to have a cut in, in, um, in season ticket prices and we wanted to sign Grant Holt and he stepped in and said here is a loan 
to, to allow us to do that. Signing Grant Holt was one of the best decisions we, we, we've we made just, in that era. We've only but, finally paid that and we off. We finally now, paid it off, finally, because we went back to the Premier yeah. League and the financial position was strong enough. And our principle was to reduce debts and loans where we could. So we finally made good what was a short term loan. So, um, you know, it shows his commitment to the club and Michael and Delia's that not only would they make those loans offered in emergency situations, but then they just said, look, it's fine, just let it go on for year after year. But when we could, we made it right. Absolutely. And one last one, David McNally. Um, obviously, he was at the club for, for a, a number of years and was a huge part of, of what happened here. Um, a £1.2 million pound payoff, is, is that is presumed the norm? Obviously, fans will be looking at that and saying it's a huge amount of money. Well, of course, it's a large amount of money. Um, but the reality was David had made a really strong contribution to this club for a number of years. We were really grateful for that. These accounts, uh, in some ways, reflect... His, his contribution to the, to the club. He left in the summer, and clearly in his departing, um, there, there was a, um, the normal kind of discussion which, has, uh, uh, which is had about loss of earnings, and um, this was a settlement which was, was reached. I can't get into um, talking more about that, or because you know, in the end these things are legally protected and confidential. So, um, but we are grateful to the contribution David made. We've now moved on. We've got a new chief executive. We're going to continue, though, to apply that same principle, sound financial club, of the supporters, cooperatively reinvesting every spare pound we can back into the playing squad. And we want to be a Premier League team, and that's our ambition. Absolutely. And fingers crossed, Ed, we'll be sat here next year and talking about some more let's encouraging so. money at Norwich City. And let's hope we do well against Brighton, eh? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Cheers. Top Thanks man. a lot. Thank you. Thank you.